It's Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the October, November 2018, Pure, um, sorry, the Mechanics Paper 4-2 from Cambridge 9709 syllabus. This is Paper 4, Variant 2. This question here is about variable acceleration. And we're told that there's a particle that moves in a straight line starting from a point O with initial velocity one meters per second. And this is important here. Initial velocity is one meters per second. The acceleration of the particle at time t seconds after leaving O is a meters per second squared, where a equals 1.2 t to the power of a half minus 0 0.6 t. At time capital T seconds after leaving O, the particle reaches its maximum velocity. Find the value of t. All right, so now this is an expression for the acceleration. We know in the question they've told us that the initial velocity is one meters per second, which means when time equals zero, the velocity is equal to one. All right, that might that will definitely come in useful in the question somewhere. Um, so it's important for us to take that into account. Now we got to find the maximum velocity. Now the maximum velocity is going to be when the acceleration is zero. And the minimum, both of them, would be when the acceleration is uh, zero. Okay. So now, um, the maximum velocity. So we know that the velocity, or we know that we have displacement, we have velocity, and we have acceleration. And to get from, uh, you know, displacement to velocity, we have to differentiate the displacement and it gives us the velocity. And to get from velocity to acceleration, we have to differentiate the velocity and it gives us the acceleration. And to, to go the other way, we have to do the opposite. So to get from acceleration to velocity, we have to integrate the acceleration with respect to t. And to get from the uh, velocity to the um, displacement, we have to integrate the velocity with respect to t. Okay, so we can say that the maximum velocity is going to be, we can find the maximum by finding dv dt and equating it to zero. Now, we already know what dv dt is because it's acceleration. So when the acceleration is equal to zero, we will get the maximum velocity. Okay, so we can say when t equals, when, when t equals capital T, the acceleration is equal to zero. So we can say that we've got 1.2, times capital T to the power of a half minus 0 0.6 times capital T has to equal zero. So we have to solve this equation. Now this can be solved in a, a number of ways. Probably the easiest way is to think of this as a disguised quadratic, in which case we can say let um, capital T to the power of a half be, for example, a letter, let's say B. And that means that B squared would be T. So I can replace the T to the power of a half with B. So I have 1.2b minus, and I have 0 0.6, and this is going to be b squared equals 0. So this is like a quadratic. Um, I can make it a bit easier to solve by dividing both sides by negative 0 0.6. Okay, that will cause this to become positive b squared, and this become negative 2b. Because if I divide 1.2 by 0 0.6, I get 2. So... Divide by negative 0 0.6 gives you negative 2. So b squared minus 2b equals 0. So either b, so you're going to have b times b minus 2 equals 0. So either b is equal to 0, either b equals 0, or b equals 2. Okay, so that means either t to the power of a half equals 0, or t to the power of a half equals 2. So of course t is going to be 4 seconds. Okay, or t is going to be 0. So that will be the maximum velocity when t equals, uh, sorry, the maximum velocity when t equals four. Okay, initial velocity is one, and that's going to be the maximum velocity. If we want to confirm that it's a maximum, we could find the ADT and substitute this inside that, and that would give us the maximum velocity. We could do that, all right, because uh, as we know, we can find the second differential of something and replace the value in it. It tells us if it's a maximum or minimum. So if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to find the ADT, okay, to confirm, you're going to have a half times 1.2, which is one point, which is 0 0.6. So you have 0 0.6t to the power of negative 3 over 2. Oh, sorry, to the negative half, sorry. Let me just do that again. 
So you have the ADT is going to be uh, 0 0.6 t to the power of negative a half minus 0 0.6. That's going to be 0 0.6 over the square root of t minus 0 0.6. So if you put um, 0 0.6 divided by root 4, which is 2 minus 0 0.6, that's going to give me 0 0.3 minus 0 0.6, which is negative 0 0.3. So we can say as the a dt is less than 0, therefore, okay, you can say the acceleration is a maximum when t equals 4. So I don't think in this question you have to actually verify it. Um, I think it would be fine if you just find the answer, but that's just a bit extra. We can make sure that it shows that we have t equals 4 is a maximum. Then it says, find the velocity of the particle when its acceleration is maximum, when its acceleration is maximum, okay? So we're going to find the velocity of the particle when the acceleration is a maximum. You do not need to verify that the acceleration is a maximum rather than a minimum. Okay, well, I just, I just, uh, oh, for acceleration, this is for the velocity. So now we have to find the velocity of the particle when the acceleration is a maximum. So the first thing we need to do um, is to find when the acceleration is a maximum. So we can do that using this technique over here. Okay, we can find the ADT, which I already did. So A is equal to, as we said, 1.2 t to the power of a half minus 0 0.6 t. And the ADT, as we just found, is equal to 0 0.6 t to the power of minus 3 over 2 minus 0 0.6. Sorry, to, to the power of minus a half, not minus 3 over 2. To the power of minus a half minus 0 0.6. So A is a maximum when the A dt is equal to 0, as we worked out before. So we know that this is going to be 0 0.6 over t to the power of a half minus 0 0.6 has to equal 0. Okay, so we can now um, calculate t to the power of a half. It's basically going to be 1, isn't it? Because you have 0 0.6 over t to the power of a half equals 0 0.6. So you end up with 0 0.6 equals 0 0.6 t to the power of a half, which means that t to the power of a half is equal to 1. Therefore, t is equal to 1. You square both sides. T is equal to 1. So when t equals 1 second, that's when you have the maximum acceleration. But it says find the velocity at this time. So we've got to find the velocity when the acceleration is a maximum. Okay? So we can do this in a couple of ways. Okay? Basically, we know that to find the velocity, to find the velocity, you have to integrate the acceleration with respect to time. Okay? Now, this is where the student asked the question. Okay? Um, the reason why I'm answering this question right now is because a student asked me, in some cases, when we integrate in these kind of equations, we have to find plus c. In some cases, we don't have to find plus c. Well, what I'm going to tell you now is we always have to find what plus c is. Now, sometimes not finding plus c doesn't affect your answer. So in the mark scheme, you'll get the right answer. Okay. What's the reason for that? It's because in those cases which are many cases, the value of c will end up being zero anyway. That's why it seems like you don't have to find what plus c is. But in fact, you must find what plus c is in case it's not equal to zero. You must find the value of c. Okay, so when we integrate this, there's two ways of doing it. One way is to do it writing plus c without any limits and then finding what c is. The other way of doing it is to find the velocity straight away with the limits. I like to use um, you know, finding the velocity straight away with the limits, which I'll show you first how to do, and then I'll show you how to do it using the method where you find plus c, you know, separately. In this case, I'm going to use now, it's, it's like you're finding plus c, but automatically, right? So I know that when I integrate the acceleration, I get the velocity. So the velocity is going to be something I have to find. So I'm going to find what v is, okay? Because they're, they're asking us to find, um, the velocity when the acceleration is a maximum. So when the acceleration is a maximum, that's when t equals 1. You want to find the velocity when t equals 1. Okay? When acceleration is a maximum, when t equals 1. So we want to find the velocity when t equals 1. Um, so I'll put here 
t to the power of a half minus 0 0.6 t dt. So when you integrate this, you get an expression for the velocity. I want to find the velocity when t equals 1. And I know, and this is where it comes in, what we did, what we learned before, that when t equals 0, the velocity is equal to 1. That's the key here. Normally, the velocity is equal to 0 when time equals 0. That's when it seems like you don't have to find what plus c is because c ends up being 0. But in this case, we know that when the velocity is 1, that's when the time is at zero. So those correspond to each other. We want to find the velocity when the acceleration is maximum, that's when t equals one. And we know that at one second, that's uh, so when, when uh, time is initial zero, the velocity was one. So we can use these limits. So on this side, you're going to get v minus one. Okay, and this is going to be, when you integrate this, now we have to integrate this and use these limits. That's going to be 1.2t to the power of three over two divided by 3 over 2 minus 0 0.6 t squared divided by 2. And we have our limits here of 0 and 1. So let me just uh, simplify this expression first. So you're going to have um, v minus 1 equals. So when you do 1.2 divided by 3 over 2, that's 2 thirds times 1.2 which is going to be 0 0.8, so that's 0 0.8 t to the power of 3 over 2, which is the same as the square root of t cubed, minus, that's going to be 0 0.3 times t squared. We have our limits of 1 and 0, so we can now say that v minus 1 equals, when I put 1 in here, you're going to end up with um, 0 0.8, okay, cube root of t cubed is going to be 1, minus 0 0.3, okay, and then minus 0, put 0 in both of them, is going to be minus 0, so you end up with v minus 1 equals 0 0.5, therefore v is equal to 1.5 meters per second. So there's the answer, the velocity at the time when the acceleration is a maximum, okay, so that's the answer to this question part 2. Um, as I said, we could have, and I'm just going to just extend the page a little bit down here, we could have done this also by finding plus c. So we would have got exactly this. We would have said v equals, and we would have ended up with exactly the same as this, 0 0.8 um, times the square root of t cubed minus 0 0.3 times t squared, and you'd have plus c. And then we would say, okay, when time equals 0, the velocity equals 1, so you have 1 equals, and you'll have 0 0.8 um, times, and you're going to put instead of times 0, so you're going to have, that will be 0, and that will be minus 0 0.3 times 0 plus c. So you'll end up with c equals 1. So then you're going to have to put a plus 1 at, at the end of this. Okay, so you'll end up with a plus 1 at the end of this, which is the same thing as what we ended up with here. This would give us 0 0.5, then you'd add 1. This gave us 0 0.5, then we added 1. So this automatically finds C for you. But the point is, you must find what C is. If you're using this method, you must find what C is. If you're using this method, then the C will be found automatically. It will be found automatically. Okay? But you are finding the C because of this thing here. So please, if you do use a method where you put plus C, you must not just integrate without putting the plus C. Okay, you have to find what C is. Don't assume it's going to be zero always. It's not always going to be zero. Okay, now this method that I mentioned here, you know, will automatically give you that anyway. Okay, so I, I much prefer to use this method over here. But don't think you don't have to find the plus C. You do. This just does it automatically. So there's the answer to this question, number five. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from... Uh, variable acceleration from P1 of Cambridge can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video which is linked over here which shows you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.